Now a very important subject is coming. A difference of behavior of these two groups of the people of the book. The Jews were bitter, most enemies. And bracketed them are the idolaters, the pageants, who openly associate others with Allah. On the contrary, the attitude of the Christians as a whole at the time of the Prophet was absolutely different. Although not many of them embraced Islam, except for the people in Abyssinia. But you know, the letters of invitation which were sent to them, most of them honored the letters of the Prophet They were very lukewarm. Heraclius, you know, he even intended to accept Islam. But he only wanted that the whole Roman Empire maybe should be converted to Islam today as 300 years ago. Constantine, the emperor, Roman emperor, had converted and the whole, you know, empire had converted. So that the system remained the same. Constantine remained the emperor. Had he alone embraced Islam, he would have to abdicate the throne. So that was where he failed, when people didn't agree. Otherwise, he had recognized Muhammad sallallahu that he is the person. About him, we find prophecies in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Anyhow, the difference, لَتَجَدَنْ أَشَدَّنْ نَاسِ عَدَاوَةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الْيَهُودِ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا You'll surely find the most vehement of the people in hostility and enmity towards, the, towards those who, have, who, who believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-Yahud, the Jews, wal-lazina ashraku. And with them are bracketed the idolaters. Today also we find, you know, Israel and Bharat, how much, you know, closer to each other. This ayah is speaking for itself. And you will find the closest to them in affection and love. Those who call themselves Nasara. And this is because among them there are priests, true priests, sincere priests. And Rohbanan, there are monks. And this is because they do not take to arrogance and haughtiness. They are not proud. Now these conditions have absolutely changed. These were the conditions at the time of the Prophet Now the conditions have changed. Although they have changed temporarily, but even temporary, you know, in Allah's calendar, because one day is 1000 years, so even half day may be 500 years. The things started changing nearly 500 years ago or 400 years ago, with the advent of Protestantism, then division of Christianity, then the Gradual control of Jews over the Christians. And at this time, this process has reached its zenith. Although there are some voices of, you know, dissent, which you might be hearing from the southern states of the United States and the western part, the militias, etc., etc., and Lyndon H. LaRouche, people like them, there are, you know, some voices of dissension, but practically, the whole Christian world is under the thumb of the Jews, the Zionists. And Christians have lost their identity, at least for the time being. But things will change. We also believe in the second advent of Jesus, he will be coming. They also believe in it. And we have been told by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa then, then, Christians will close to Muslims, come close, close and closer. 
No difference will remain and both will become one. Islam will be the deen of these Christians also. So just as we found that in this world, the munafiqeen were bracketed with Muslims, with Mormons. In the hereafter, they will be bracketed with the kuffar, the unbelievers. In the same way, today, Christians and Jews are bracketed together. But before the end of this world, things are going to change. I can't say when. I can't give you the timetable. But this must happen. These are clear prophecies. Before that, the whole of the Christian world is going to wage a very big war against the Muslims, which they call Armageddon. And the Prophet ﷺ has said, named it Al-Malhamatul Uzma, the greatest war of human history. And you might be hearing these slogans from these Christians, Armageddon is coming. Jesus is coming, Armageddon is coming. This Armageddon, it is going to be a very big war. With very high casualties of the Muslims. In one hadith we find the words, that a crow will fly and fly and fly for the whole day. He won't find even a single inch on the land without a dead body to come down. After being exhausted, it will fall on a dead body. Nine hundred ninety-nine out of every one thousand will be killed. These are the words of the hadith. hadith. You can find these hadith in the Kitabul Malahim and Kitabul Fitan. In every collection of hadith, you have these chapters. Anyhow. But after that, you know, the tables will be turned, that Jesus will come down, and the leader will appear among the Muslims, Mahdi, and by their cooperation and helping each other. And some armies will come from the east to help Mahdi. And then the things will be changed. And then, you know, the Jews will be eradicated. Eliminated altogether. And Christians will become Muslims. So that will be the end, inshallah. But anyhow, actually this is, you know, the condition which was there at the time of the Prophet. This ayah refers to an incident. Uh, you know, the, this migration towards Habsha took place before the migration to Madina. So many Muslims went there. Then there was a controversy and argument. Then the Jashi Nagus, he, you know, said, okay, what Muhammad has said, sallallahu alayhi wa what Quran has said, is absolutely correct. So, so many people there, including himself, they accepted Islam. And a few years after, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa and the Muslims, they migrated to Medina. A deputation of 70, you know, New Muslims, converts, you know, who were Christians before, now they were Muslims, they came over to Medina. And here, you know, when Quran was read out to them, they were so much moved by it, that their eyes overflowed with tears. They were also Christians previously. And when they heard and listened to what was sent down on the Messenger of Allah, Tara, you know, you see, you look to their eyes, they are overflowing with tears. Because of the truth that they recognized. And in our souls, you know, they recognize the truth. And they are moved then. And our emotions, you know. And as a sign of that motivation, tears come to your eyes. And they are crying out, Oh, our Lord, we believe. So please write down our names among your witnesses. Witnesses of Allah. So please write down our names also among those who testify. And why shouldn't we believe in what believe in Allah and what has reached us from the truth? 
the reward and recompense for the good doers for the muhsinin now what actually mean is meant by mu'mini muhsinin in quran will come very soon in an ayah this this word is mostly misunderstood by muslims ihsan we only know doing good to others this is also one meaning of the word but ihsan actually as a term of islam is making your religion more beautiful your attachment to allah more strong so that your behavior as a moment becomes more and more and more beautiful husn min husn al islam al mar ke tarkuhu ma la yani it's a very good hadith which came to my mind it's a beauty of the islam of a person that he should give up everything which is useless giving no benefit your time is very precious either you have to use it for fulfilling some requirements of this worldly life you are earning okay it's a need or you spend it for earning something for the hereafter only whiling away time past times yes you know killing the time this is this doesn't become of a muslim who knows that every moment of today is going to become eternal in the hereafter the reward of this limited life is going to be repaid to us in the unlimited life can there be any ratio between the finite and the infinite no ratio so every moment of this life also is so important so ihsan means beautifying your religion your character your behavior as the bondsman of allah but this i will come very soon